Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we'll be looking at uh, moving on from uh, the vector part of complex numbers and looking at geometrical locus problems. So let's have a look at a couple of theoretical examples first and in another video we'll look at um, actual examples with uh, numbers and whatnot. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So this right here is a standard form in which we can expect to find a locus question. So this says that the modulus of z minus z naught is equal to r. Now let's think about this for a moment. What does this actually mean? Well, it, 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 it reads in English, so this is the mathematical statement, but in actual English, this represents the locus of all points z whose distance from the complex number z naught is equal to r. Okay, so we have a point z naught, and every point that z can take is, is r units away from the point z naught. So geometrically, this is a circle, center at z naught, and has a radius of r. Okay? Now, we can prove this algebraically, and in fact, all these uh, locus standard forms that we see can be uh, uh, proven algebraically, but most schools don't really focus much on the geometric uh, side of locus, but it's my opinion that if you learn the geometric approach to solving these uh, problems, it saves you a lot of time in exams. So here we can see... Um, that by the definition of the modulus of a complex number, we can get that we can get this uh, formula out, and it comes out to a the equation of a circle, right? And I'll let you uh, look through that by yourself because it's just a small derivation; it's nothing too major. But I want to spend time on some of the harder ones, so let's have a look at another one. So here's another standard form. We have that the modulus of z minus a is equal to the modulus of z minus b. Okay, so once again, this is the mathematical statement. What does it mean in terms of an English uh, sentence? Well, this represents the locus of all points z whose distance from the complex number a is equal to its distance from the complex number b. Right? This expression here represents the distance of z from a. And this one represents the distance of z from b. Remember, the modulus is the distance of the vector, or the length of the vector. Okay, so, what's, wh what is this geometrically? Geometrically, this is the perpendicular bisector of the chord AB. Now, that might sound uh, very formal or very complicated in words, but let's have a look at it on a, as, in terms of an image. So here we have our point A. And here we have our point B. And we draw a chord that joins the two points A, B. Now, any point that is the same distance from A and B lies on this line in red. This is the perpendicular bisector of this uh, chord right here. So as you can see, if you draw lines from A to the, from the point A to this red line, or from the point B to the red line, any point on the red line, these two uh, lengths here will be equal. And so the perpendicular bisector of the chord AB is the geometrical representation of this standard form of a locus. Okay, let's have a look at another example. And don't, don't feel too uh, worried if you're not understanding straight away, because when we see examples, then it will become much more clearer. Okay, so in this uh, standard type, it says that the argument of z minus a equals alpha. Okay, once again, what does this mean in terms of a sentence? Well, this is this represents the locus of all points z whose argument is alpha. Now, you might be wondering, well, that's the same as arg of z equals alpha. That's the lo locus of all points whose argument is alpha. So what's, what does this minus a do here? Well, geometrically, this is a ray which starts at a, but doesn't include a. 
and it makes an angle alpha with the positive real axis. So, first of all, why don't we include A? Well, we don't include A because the argument of A minus A, so if Z can take the value A, then that means we should be able to sub it into this. Now, if Z can take the value A, we'll have arg of A minus A, which is arg zero. And arg zero is indeterminate. And I might talk about that in a separate video, actually, because I think it's quite important to talk about arg zero. So, we have that arg zero is indeterminate. So how do we represent this? Well, it's going to be a ray, as it says here. It's a ray that starts at A, but doesn't include A. So we draw an open circle. And it's the ray that makes an angle alpha with the positive real axis. So, that's what this dotted line is. This dotted line is parallel to the real axis. And so, therefore, this angle here is alpha. Okay? Okay. So there's two more standard forms that we should look at. All right, now this, so that those first three are, are quite common and you see them uh, often enough. And if you have a fairly decent understanding of complex numbers, then you should be able to recognize exactly what uh, they represent geometrically. Let's have a look at two that are slightly different. So here we have that the arg of z minus z1 minus the arg of z minus z2 is alpha. Now I've drawn a diagram here and let's, let's have a look at what this means in uh, words. So this represents the locus of all points z that make an angle alpha when subtended by the chord AB. Now when you hear this, you should think back to your uh, circle geometry and we recognize that this is the arc of a circle and we can show this algebraically which I will show uh, maybe in a separate video when we do an example on this type of locus right so this might not uh, become very clear to you straight away you can use your uh, circle geometry and your properties of triangles to think of this geometrically but this is maybe an easier way for you to think of it. If alpha is positive, the locus of Z such that the arg of Z minus Z1 minus the arg of Z minus Z2 equals alpha is the arc that goes from Z1, so from this point here, in the anti-clockwise direction. And it subtends the chord Z1 and Z2. So this angle here, which uh, is subtended by the chord AB, or Z1 to Z2, this angle here is alpha, which is the angle that is given in the locus. Now, you might ask, well, what if alpha is negative? Well, then it's the same thing, but the arc goes from Z1 to Z2 in the clockwise direction. So, this time it will go downwards. It'd be the minor arc in this case. Okay, and once again, this might seem all too much to just understand without seeing an example, but uh, don't worry, you'll understand it much more when we see an example in a later video. Alright, and let's have a look at a final example here. So, this one says that the modulus of Z minus Z1 plus the modulus of Z minus Z2 is equal to 2A. Alright. Now here, I forgot to mention that A is a constant, so I might just write here, A will be a real constant, so A is real. Okay, now, you probably won't know much about this until you learn or study conic sections, which is usually the fourth or fifth um, topic that you do in four unit. So let's, let's think about what this actually says. This represents the locus of all points Z, whose distance from a complex number Z1, which is this part here, the distance of Z minus, uh, sorry, the distance from Z from Z1, plus its distance from a complex number Z2, which is this expression here, is equal to a constant 2A. And when we look at co uh, conic sections uh, in future videos, you'll learn that this is the definition of an ellipse as a locus. 
right? So when we look at our conic sections, you'll learn a few different definitions of, of the ellipse and of the hyperbola. And this is one of the definitions of an ellipse. The ellipse is the curve such that its distance from one point plus its distance from another point is equal to a constant 2a. Now, geometrically, this is what we just said, this is the ellipse with foci at z1 and z2 and has a major axis of length 2a. Now, some of, these, some of this terminology might not mean much to you because you might not have studied uh, conic sections yet, but don't worry, when we uh, learn about conic sections, it's probably a good idea to come back and revisit this uh, video and the video in which we do an example of this type because then you'll fully understand what we're talking about. Okay, and so these are the main geometrical uh, locus questions that you see in four unit complex numbers and the next video will be uh, numerical examples working with these uh, standard forms. Okay, thanks for watching.